What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, and now the one and only Andy Cortez is going to give us an impression of Stone Cold Steve Austin, but he works at Cold Stone Creamery <laughs> in Toledo, Ohio. Otherwise, it was Stone Cold Very Creamery specific. Steve Austin. <laughs> um, uh, is that going to be strawberry or not? <laughs> He's the man of a million voices, I ladies feel like and gentlemen. In the room with us now. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Crushed it, yeah. You know, I, I didn't know if you could top Rosie O'Donnell with a flat tire in Tucson, Arizona, but you did. You crushed that. The sun's hot out here. <laughs> <laughs> that is the energy we have, ladies and gentlemen. I already said I'm Greg. I already said that's Andy. So let's talk about the producer. Slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Hello, Greg. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. Can you believe it's Monday? I can. It comes and goes. It comes wow. and goes. See, I'm in this weird time warp. I talked yeah. about this a little bit on Greg Way today. Of course, my exclusive show on patreon.com slash kind of funny. Can you walk I'm... in real quick, Greg, and say, uh, um, yeah, sorry, I'd like to order a chocolate ice cream. Do you want me to actually walk in? Yeah, yeah, walk in. Oh, no, just pretend. Like, shing. Okay, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, little yeah. door, yeah. Oh, man, yeah, a lot of options here, and you got the stone. And now, Carter, my friend, who walked in with me as well. You know, if you tip, they have to sing. <laughs> that works. But you know what? I'm not ready for that. Uh, yes, uh, bald sir with the goatee. Can I get a chocolate? And that's the back of the line. <laughs> What did I do? <laughs> uh, you're trying to order, but no. you're, not, you're oh, not in oh. line yet. Well, I feel like me and Carter, you know, we like, are there a lot of people in the store? <laughs> when I came in, I thought it's it was are we just normal people. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Anyways, it's a weird one for me because I got my dad and his girlfriend in town, right? And so I'm running these half days where we took Benny to swim class today, went oh. to the Discovery Museum. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, you bring Benny home, you, you feed everybody, bring, put Benny into nap time, and usually that would be, you know, my nap time, some quiet time on the weekend. But no, I was gassing up, get to work, we gotta go. You know what I mean? So I'm in this weird half in, half out. What day is it? They don't feel like anything anymore. They're all just running together. <laughs> what do I do? Time means nothing to me. I don't. I don't work in a normal job oh, like Jesus you guys. Christ, everybody. This is Carter Harrell, and I know what you're saying. I hate guests on the show. <laughs> They're terrible. Yeah. Why do they do? Everyone in the chat's like, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of funny podcast. Kind of funny. All right. Carter's worked for us many times. Many, many, That's many, true. many, 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 many times. Right, Tim Getty. That is so true. So true. I in get fact, the best phone calls ever from Tim. Just uh, saying, like, what, what time of night do you get these phone calls? Two or three. Yeah, yeah, say, yeah. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> hey, so here's the thing. <laughs> okay. And they're like, so, that's pretty good no so pressure. far. Yes, yes. No <laughs> pressure. <laughs> I bet no. Andy could absolutely kill a Tim Getty's phone call impression because they all, they're all the same thing. So, what are you doing? <laughs> how you doing? That's usually how it starts. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. boy. Look, I'm thinking. Succession. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so but Carter, usually what, it's all it takes because yeah. So many many moons ago. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but it was uh, we were gearing up for Screen Fast, the the Kevin Coelho uh, classic with uh, Gary oh Whitta, me God. and Blessing, where we reviewed uh, Sonic the Hedgehog on Screencast, but we called it Screen Fast. Oh my Fast. God! And you just yeah. made a version of the KF jingle. And it was so good. It sounded like Sonic. And we're like, oh, my God, we have to use this. And it wasn't until a couple of years later that we were like, let's go all in. Let's get new theme songs for all the shows. And you just kind of became my go-to guy. Of, like, I would just throw a couple words at you, like, succession. And, like, <laughs> two hours later, I just get a response that it's just the KF jingle done perfectly in the succession style. So every single intro you've heard, I mean, for the most part, I'd say 90 Eight percent of the intros in the last couple of years have been Carter Harrell, including the kind of funny podcast jam that uh, just oh, yeah, that's right. welcome what a banger, to this right? show. Yeah, <laughs> a funny story, real quick, about that Sonic intro because I think I just DM'd Kevin or somebody saying, "Hey, I, I was messing around with this stuff," and I remember getting excited to post. You know, yeah, I got some music, kind of funny, and then you guys show up in these Sonic costumes, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of dicks. <laughs> a lot of dicks. I, a lot of bold. I specifically had friends and family who I think thought I was on some like furry shit. Yeah. You know, they were like, oh, interesting programming yeah. there. Uh, so yeah, I was, I was glad for that. <laughs> <laughs> I was happy for that to be the first. Yeah. Yeah. But definitely not the last. I mean, at this point, you must have made what? 
Oh my gosh, yeah. It's gotta be. The folder keeps getting bigger and bigger, yes. Yeah. And so it's it's yeah, it's just the best the best call I could get. Cause yeah, it's every time it's some random something new Barbie I'd, this time. <laughs> I'd love to imagine like I picture Carter like uh, Doctor Strange when he's in this sort of like <laughs> when his face is like blurring and looking through all right. the different mm -hmm. outcomes because mm -hmm. like you must have a library of thousands upon thousands of sounds that you have That's to true. go what piano is this like what yeah. drum do I need for this sound and that's got to be really exciting and right. like cool to like nail the right one yeah. but also like god damn what a pain in the ass <laughs> yeah i mean that, that is kind of the fun part honestly is like i'll usually just like basically reconstruct the actual theme of succession or whatever the thing is and yeah that's kind of the fun of it of like just finding the exact thing and i'm sure you have kind of learned in this process that like those little details can kind of matter how you'll say like hey can we add this little piano note from succession and then i'll add it be like oh yeah that's totally mm. Because, you know, when you're not hearing the melody from the song, you don't necessarily put together when you're hearing the kind of funny melody. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a, rare, yeah. a rare balance, too, because it's like normally what happens is we'll decide, OK, we're actually doing this screencast or this in review or whatever it is. And my first stop will be I hit up Carter and I'm like, hey, can you make the music, whatever. And then immediately I hit up Cameron Kennedy and I'm like, yeah, we're thinking about this, this project for the motion graphics and all that. And he Cameron will just start working on like the early like storyboarding stuff but then the moment he gets the music from you it just comes together in this like beautiful way but it's funny because like the original jingle was actually from Corey um Corey mcmaster right That's his last name right mm -hmm. McMaster. McMaster, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 fucking love that guy uh, he, he made the original um the kind of funny animated series theme song mm -hmm. and the okay the jingle from the the kf jingle is actually just like a line from the instrumental oh, version of that song. It's okay. just like a, a random bit of it. Um, and you'd hear it in the credits of the animated series that like the do 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 do. Yeah. And yeah. you just expanded that a little bit into like more of like a jingle. And so you just taking that jingle and applying it in a bazillion different ways. It's so funny where you, we can't lose the jingle. It still needs to sound right. like kind of funny. Mm -hmm. But you need to have the moments of like, oh, clearly this is the MCU theme song. It's not just right. cinematic triumphant music. It's like, and those weird little details, like they're, I'd say nine out of 10 times you send me shit and you always get the exact right things to pinpoint of like, clearly that's what this thing is. Uh, like one of my favorites was the 21 jump street where it's like, <laughs> yeah. let's just go with the real slim shady. <laughs> yeah. Fire, Cause that song plays the, and just like you nailed the, the instrumentation and the, uh, I don't even know the words to describe it, but You're it worked it. perfectly. But every once in a while I'd say one out of 10 times, I'm like, I think it needs this and then yep. you add it i'm like oh baby let's go. <laughs> I'm, i'll say this i've been working with tim for how long we were working together i don't know 15 Two, years. we'll say 20 years <laughs> 30 and we've had a lot of ups and downs at this company a lot of a lot of successes a lot of really great moments to celebrate nothing gets him more excited than anything. <laughs> nothing he is never but I, i'll see it in his eyes he's like nick <laughs> Gotta come check this out. And I'm like, it's a new intro for this, whatever we're doing. Yeah, it's half the fun, right? And usually they're really, really fun with the rare exception of Jurassic Park. In which Cameron mm. Kennedy would go fuck himself. <laughs> oh, right. oh, 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 yeah. yes. This is yeah. with Nick like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Love that. But they're all fun. They're all really cool. So when we're not making you make KF jingles for all the shows, mm. what do you do? Uh well, a few different things. Uh my main job is with a company called Life Score, which is I'll score my really life. cool. Great. It's literally that's exactly what it yeah? is. What it's basically right now. You know a lot about me. Score my life right now. Bum 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 bum. No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought uh, it was gonna be a number. <laughs> I thought they were like, like no, 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 no. Lot, no, we're talking like know? movie scores. Uh, right? yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like, the so, guy, right? <laughs> so we make uh, we we call it adaptive music, which the AI. the best example of that is kind of AI ish, but oh, we we're go. kind of well, I'll One get these there. People. It, I mean, it's AI in the way that video game music is AI, and it's that dynamic. it's yeah, it's reacting. It's basically video game music, but it can react to what you're doing in real gotcha. life. So like your movement speed or your driving speed or your biometrics or the weather, different stuff like that. So yeah, we make music in like little building blocks that we have a AI-ish algorithm that can generate music on the fly That's cool. in different levels of intensity. Yeah. The reason I, I say it's not totally AI is because it's real musicians like yeah, me no, that no, are making the music. Time. I'm no, 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 not no, actually no. making it uh, <laughs> <with laughs> music scales. To yeah, yeah, it, right, yeah, right. Makes sense. Uh, but I also kind of just do like some film scoring and game stuff and working with artists, uh, kind of a little bit of everything, okay. but yeah. 
Thanks for wasting your time with us so much. Hey, no problem. It's my favorite job. So <laughs> uh, take that life score. <laughs> you know what I mean, Andy? I know. I yeah, know. If I take high. my hat off, does it look like you guys are on hot ones right now? <laughs> oh, I can see that. Sure. Oh yeah. Maybe yeah, a black yeah, yeah, background. Sure. I'll bring some hot sauce next time. Definitely. Well, we got plenty sitting right here. When you put it back on, it kind of looks like your Barrett's older brother. <laughs> You know, um, it, when, you started oh, the, with the hat, on? hat obsession. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. When when we had the three shot on Tim Carter and Nick, mm-hmm. Kevin or uh, Greg kept like Greg tapped me on the arm and was like, "Look at Nick," and like I don't. <laughs> <laughs> what? What about him? Everyone, about feel free to go back. When there was a point when you, you were talking to Tim and like you're having a conversation and Nick's just trapped in it. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, I don't know. I feel that. Mom and dad are talking, but I, 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 you can see he drifted away and he came back and he started watching the chat. Like, it's a lot. This is a compliment. Because a lot of I had a high what school. What am I supposed to do? Nick, keep I, quiet unless you're sitting there. Nick, I, I get had criticized for not too much. I, I had a teacher in high school, Nick, and this teacher, you had a teacher in high school. I, he he won my love once when he said he loved Ghostbusters, sure. and not mm. like to my level of love Ghostbusters, but he loved it. Well, no and one, one thing he here. said that I thought was interesting that I've done many times since is he's like, the, what I enjoy is you can just watch that movie and you can just watch Bill Murray. Mm-hmm. Like you can just watch even when he's not talking or doing he's doing something. Yeah. And I've done it with all the other Ghostbuster characters as well, right? You're a lot like Bill Murray. Ghostbusters, where I just want to watch Nick because he's up to something. I mean, see the wheels. I feel like Nick right now. It's happening to me now. I mean, it was like (laughs) it was like last week when Nick wasn't even on camera and he had drinking too much prime energy drink and started looking at his hands and was <laughs> having <laughs> some sort of, you know, this? freak out moment. I'm yeah. so upset that wasn't actually on. <laughs> it was scary. How are you feeling now? Are you oh, feeling my, back uh, in your hands? Much better. <laughs> I, it's just one of those it's one of those things where you 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 reach your own mortality at a certain point where sure. you think to yourself, I didn't think I had a threshold for caffeine. But Prime sure, I, I sure found that threshold last week. Yeah, and it's apparently 500 milligrams of caffeine or whatever Woo. the fucks. Are, what, I just saw another things. article like, yeah, the, it's a terror. Like, it's, trying to shut it down. It's a lot. I saw it's, a TikTok where Logan Paul was all mad. He's like, how are they gonna buy? Uh, how are they gonna ban Prime in Canada? We didn't even sell in Canada. Mm. And then there's this girl like, hmm. and she's walked on the street into the the Canadian shop she's at, and it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys hear this new Diet Coke slander? Oh, the yeah. aspartame. That it's there. I mean, they're like. You already knew this, but it definitely causes cancer, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I will not stand for it, personally. There you go. I will have two Diet Coke. It's an insult, Greg, you've had cancer. Wouldn't you say that And I don't a, even. A and for the record, crisp and, Diet Coke is totally Well, worth here's, it. The, here's the thing. I got cancer, and I never tasted it. I don't drink Diet Coke. Well, so it's settled then. Smoke them if you got them, Diet Coke that's drinkers. What you know what I mean? That's why I told Kevin. Them. She's think, coming for you anyway. The sweet, horrible lady of cancer will find you, no matter what you do. The sweet, horrible lady of cancer. <laughs> that's what I they call it. her. I'm, a, I'm awaiting it. Like the, like, Dude, if I get cancer, the stuff that I just put in my body, like there's no way. I, it's just like it's You're screwed. You're going to wake up one day and your entire leg's just going to be a massive fucking growth. And you're going to be like, yeah, this is what But there's also a part of me that thinks that. Make you stronger. With it. Kind, you know, honestly, like, yeah, kind of follow me down that path. I know that sounds silly, right? But I feel like answer superhero is with, that where we're going? No, I feel like I feel like with the amount of flaming hot fries yeah. and hot Cheetos that I put in my body, that yeah. I'm kind of like you're gonna miss it burns it building up a like I've been kind of becoming uh, more and more exposed to the bad stuff my whole life, so mm-hmm. I'm kind of prepared for when it's it's like getting a little booster shot you know what i mean i think there's Similar. two schools of thought on this there's yeah one well, that i can, definitely did anybody follow that how I mean, did I, I, I'm, the, I'm missing the I, follow I, I like i 100 followed you like i've been posing myself my whole life that i feel like i will be immune to poison when it when it's ready to hit. you eat <laughs> solid I, logic. The, when you need to hit part I'm, when you eat a little too much poison right you, you know how people go like okay <laughs> yeah i want to become immune to poison so mm-hmm. you poison yourself slowly over a period of time would, and then when someone that's a thing. and then when someone tries to poison you in the james bond you're like yeah, hey, hey stupid you're uh, stupid i've been doing this iocane this powder years. for years exactly from princess bride i'm right there with you andy Thank i fucking you, understand Nick. what you're talking about right Thank you. there's two schools of thought on this one is that you build up a tolerance to this stuff over years and then you're fine or two, the more scientific what the medical community says is, the more you build it up in your system, the more likely you are to get yeah, cancer. That's definitely it. I'm probably just like on the other side of it, just trying to like justify, you know what I mean? Because I, I, look, like I, I never, I never did drugs. My vice was always sure you did. Just You're snacks. so cool. Hmm. My vice was snacks. Snacky boy. And it's and it's gonna come back to haunt me in the similar way to. You know, my friends You're back home. You're going to tell me Ambelina rolled into El Paso, Texas and didn't do a fucking line, a whip in, a bong. <laughs> Carabella all wasn't doing heroin? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, they did. Yeah, for sure. Like, we were doing heroin all the time. But, yeah. like, that, uh, that's besides the point, you know? Do you yeah. ever think, do you ever wish, like, I want? I just want to know what's going to come for me so that I can just, mm. like, 
do other stuff. Because I'm like, if See, I'm going to get cancer from Diet Coke, can I go back to smoking cigarettes? Can I, can I just do that? Because I, I miss and, smoking cigarettes. I miss it every day of my life. What if you quit exactly. Diet Coke, but it turns out it, you already got it from your past Diet Cokes? Then I just go I mean? right then back into it. you quit for nothing. Yeah, then I go right back into okay, it. I start I see, making I the Diet Coke slushies like I used to See, make if that. you remember, Nick, there was a weird science TV episode where Gary and Wyatt got watches. <laughs> That's exciting. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> Is he referencing the weird science, the short-lived weird science TV show? I don't think it was that short. It was on USA, and I want to say it was like three or four seasons. Was it really? Wow. I think it was. Yeah, I think you're right. But anyways, they got watches at one point, mm -hmm. and one told them, they each got individual watches for their fears, and one told, I'm going to fuck up it all. One told one of the guys when he was going to die, and the other <laughs> told cook. the other guy when he was going to have sex for the first time, when he's going to lose his virginity. Oh, that's pretty cool. But it turned out at the end, the watches, when they came out, they were hot, and they both dropped them, oh. and they put on the other watches. Oh, no. So it was like oh, one guy was going to die in 99 years, he thought, and then the other guy was going to oh, get laid in three days or whatever, but yeah. it was actually opposite. Oh, but then they changed their fates because they were friends or something. I forget <laughs> how the moral really worked. It didn't make sense. I'm so happy it didn't end with one of them dying as a man days. who likes time travel it didn't make a lot of sense how they yeah. changed their fates but yeah chet if i remember correctly chet <laughs> if Wyatt. i remember correctly yeah. chet had like an open propane tank in the car and they almost lit a cigar uh, this is a real these are real wheel of science real facts. Real. <laughs> <laughs> five seasons oh, five wow. seasons night wow. edited night now eight? kevin while you're here what find out the one who just <laughs> control f watch like watches maybe even find and i'll time travel Time travel movie. It wasn't time travel. Yeah, well, no, it look was virginity. Up, yeah, virgin. Put there, virgin in. There with the T. <laughs> Google virgin. There you go. There, yeah, there, go. We go. there we go. I was looking at episode nine 94. of season. I don't know. Lisa gives the boys watches that count down to Wyatt's death and the loss of Gary's virginity. It was called um, "Keeps on Ticking." Everybody, if you want to watch that tonight, wow. that's incredible. I might go back and watch the show. I didn't. I. I right after Suits. <laughs> Just um, a heads up. I mean, come on. We've been talking about. You know, hey gonna be a dry period for in review when the strike stuff's all it was even Ooh, when it's going on or whatever true weird science tv show in review episode by episode i love this weird science. and i want i want to say the next TV. statement of my life and ironically and i don't want to be judged about this that's fair okay good start i wish i had started recording myself watching suits because i have had reactions to this <laughs> show that I am not proud of, but that were incredible. I have gotten up and Suits screamed at moments in Suits. This shit it gets crazy anime. Nick walked in just today telling me, like, this. Tim, Suits gets crazy anime, man. It gets crazy anime. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? Would you believe, Andy, that there are like 10 law firms in New York that constantly try to screw each other over in a, in a crazy epic competition to be who's going to be the top law firm in the top city in the top country in the world? Crazy. What, ep what season? I'm on season seven now, out of eight. Damn, I did not know there were that many. I only watched like, the first. Is it over or still going? No, it's still going. I got, I got. Uh, Suits is still a show. Oh no, no, no. I'm sorry. My apologies. I'm still. My watching of it is still. Oh, yeah. Obviously, no, you're not, you're not you stop until you're done. No, yeah. but no. Suits ended, I think, in 2019. So, Basically, what I, know, I what I just wanted to say before we get the last thing I'll say suits. about suits. But um, what I need is a uh, is a, you know, these world scientists that say like, Weird hey, if we don't stop our emissions by this and this date were totally fucked yeah i need a scientist to go back in time with me and be like if you don't stop eating hot hot cheetos and hot fries and drinking soda by this date then you're definitely screwed yeah you that's know, what by, i want by the year like 2003 if you don't lessen the if you don't lessen the the input then you're really really fucked for the future that's what i need point of no return but since yeah. that's not happening you might as well just might as well say fuck <laughs> dig in, <laughs> right dive in yeah, yeah. Exactly. no scientists have just shown yet <laughs> Calvin Perez in the live chat says, uh, he said, I, I work in a, uh, in a law firm in New York, LOL. This brings up a really good point. How many seasons of illegal drama do we have to watch before you could legit, you think you could take on a court case? <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> You know what I mean? Come on. Come on, bro. Uh, no, I, no, no, here's the thing. Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> we all know how good I would be You'd as be a Wild Wings waiter. Yes. I mm. would be equally good as being a fucking I defense mean, attorney. different <laughs> Like, how can... How can <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it's part of kind of funny lore. It's part of kind of funny lore that I'd be a great Wild Wings waiter. Okay, but, okay, but like... And I don't, we don't... But we haven't talked enough about how... I think I could be a great lawyer. You know, I could be a good Uber driver, a fake Uber driver. <laughs> I could also be a great astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the uh, you know, it, reasonable doubt is all you need to get great somebody out. out of something, 100%. right? Yeah. And I feel like I'd be so good at just grinding down the jury and getting one person there, but he's right. 
I don't 100% know this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to listen. Mm -hmm. Most people, remember, aren't educated on the jury like we are, right? They're more like a Kevin Coelho. Great. And I can <laughs> grease wheels like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kevin, Kevin is so bad. Greg, that was so perfect. Kevin literally just got up and was walking out the door. As you said that, he turns around angry and just shits his head. <laughs> He's, you know, Kevin, a blue collar man. You know what I mean? Dropped out of the third grade. <laughs> like that guy. You give me 12. I don't even know what point he's trying to make you here. You give me 12. Kevin's in the box. So I'll get him. <laughs> he's trying get to make him. himself look better. As a I'll be like, listen, by, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin here. The, yeah, the, I, I'll, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be the first to admit the footage makes it look like you know my my client Nick Scarpino did murder that man. That, but here's what I'm telling you: we already heard from people talking about you know the highest quality video TV you can get is an 8K. That was Tim. Tim was on the stand talking about that, right? Yeah, this so. is in 480 interlaced. It's not that good. That's not enough. All I'm saying is we can't send a man like this to death row. Amen. Unless we are 100% sure. Are you all 100% sure right now? You know what I mean? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I just might be a small town defense lawyer. I think you could do it. But I think. You turn me around real right? fast. Yeah. It's I'm, black I'm, and white. Sometimes the images get flipped. You know, where's the footage from that gas station of the plane hitting the Pentagon? I got a lot of questions. Yeah, answer. here we go. It's like, we got there. We got there, everybody. We got there. I'm so sorry. Dude. This is how it goes sometimes. I had to go. 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 I just imagine the, the jury best. being like, yeah. Okay. Like, wait, what? Is that 11? I'll tell you what I call I was with him. I call that one the razzle dazzle. Yes. <laughs> razzle dazzle. Now, now all these Kevins, all right? Yeah. These people just one mm. step removed from somebody who got kicked by a mule. They're like, well, well, he was saying something about the footage not being, but he is bringing it. I don't know about 9-11. You know what I mean? <laughs> now I'm not sure. I mean, he's making a good point there. Maybe he's making a good point here. <laughs> I would love to the see The hole some. was punched perfectly into the Pentagon. How did they do that? Did. And there was that one wheel <laughs> I'm in blame, you know what I mean? Yeah. We've all seen the power yeah. horse. Where are the bodies, Greg? <laughs> and I crack the coke and I drink it. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. now, cheers into the juice. I haven't Campbell. watched Suits and I don't plan to. No, no offense. Just, I'm just busy. But is it better than the practice? I don't remember the practice. That Dylan time. McDermott. Remember yeah, I don't guy? know that I ever watched it. I'm a, I, I the love coolest Dylan McDermott. Name, but, I think I yeah. ever. Yeah. Well, like, remember, he, well, who's the other, who's yeah. the other Dermot guy? Dermot Mulroney. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The superior Dermot. Thank they you. were too close. You couldn't have it. Laura like, Flynn Boyle. Remember oh. her? Oh, yeah. Because, oh, yeah. again, cover of Maxim, all rise, burned into the little Greg's mind. Growing all up rise. as a Mexican kid, I didn't really know like about a lot of white names. So names like Dylan McDermott. She was were so mm. badass to me. Oh, oh sure. who's the who was the son of the wall the wallflower singer? Wallflower singer. One head. I'm yeah. assuming you're looking at me because I'm like the music guy. I'm yeah. supposed to know <laughs> I mean, stuff like this, but Jacob I got Dylan? nothing for you. Yeah, I think oh, it was Bob Dylan's son. Dil yeah, Bob Dylan. Okay, okay, okay yeah. Yeah. Dylan Dylan. Bob Dylan's son. No, no, Dylan? no, it was Jacob, Jacob, Dylan. Jacob Dylan. Jacob Dylan. I don't know what I don't Jacob Dylan. So what Dylan was D I L L O N. Then it was Dylan. Um. No, but like names like that, and then, or my, my cousin had a friend named Ty, and I was like, damn, that shit. If we can mm. pause for a second, I just know we'll, a lot of. I like, want to get back to you being a weirdo. Michaels. I want to get back to you being a weirdo because I talked to my dad about you while he's been here. But what I want to talk more about is something that I I was thinking about Jacob Dylan this very weekend. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, if I'm what, lying, I'm dying, context? Andy. If I'm lying, I'm dying. I was thinking about sure. Jacob Dylan, right? Because it takes me back to Columbia, Missouri. All right. And I had a friend there who worked in the hospitality business at the hotels. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Working the front desk or whatever mm -hmm. he was. And he went, came to the bar one night. We we were all gathered around the table. Says, of course he was. We were gathered around the table, whatever. And he was. He thought he had the. He said I had. I had. I had a really funny encounter with Jacob Dylan last night. And I was like, well, "What do you mean?" And he's like, and I'm like, "The one headlight wallflowers guy." And he's like, "Yes, it was him." And I said, "What happened?" And he said he came in to check. He checked in at the hotel last night for a show at the Blue Note or whatever. And I said, oh, "Thanks." And I just have to say, I'm a really big fan of your father. Like he left a pregnant pause there, oh. so good Jacob thing. And I was like, mm, that wasn't good. And that has stuck with me for 20-some years now. 20-some yeah. years now. Wow. Almost as much as the hole in the Pentagon, but we'll get to that <laughs> another time. You know That's what I mean? About the same amount of time. Because I'll tell you what. You want to talk about the government razzle-dazzle. Everybody hung up on the World Trade Center. But what about this Pentagon? You know what yeah. I mean? That's <laughs> someone's finally asking the real question. <laughs> Hard question. In 2023. Yeah. <laughs> but that sticks with me. I'm like, oh, that was a stupid thing to say. Yeah. You know what I mean? That. You work. You know, and I mean, I'm not. Even shitting my friend, but you're, 
here's some jackass kid working at a hotel. He's Jacob Dylan traveling <laughs> the world playing music. His dad's not dead, right? Bob, Bob no, Dylan. I think Bob Dylan's. He could t- talk to his dad whenever he wants. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the his dad's still alive and my friend's dad wasn't. His, his oh dad's famous. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! I don't want you. Just, that got so dark. Uh, Why? Well, I don't want you thinking I'm about to close the gap and my dad, my friend's dad was on the Pentagon plane. All right. Oh my! <laughs> I wasn't saying that. It all came back around. Even though there were rumors, somebody saw that plane months later. You remember this? Oh my god! How was that plane hole so big? <laughs> <laughs> a perfect oh, circle. The plane. <laughs> there was a wheel and an engine on the ground. <laughs> they say the wheel. The <laughs> they say the wheel didn't match the plane. God, oh, man, no, this, is, this is like this is a weird one. It is a weird <laughs> one, you know. Yeah, I'm just sitting back and watching this one. I don't think I need to partake. Bring in this fucking video, guys. <laughs> this is one of those things that like. It just, you wouldn't, it just wouldn't, it doesn't make sense no, yeah. with as instantaneous as technology is to try to explain this to someone of age now, consuming the internet of like whatever, of like, <laughs> sometime, I don't even know. I'll just say in early 2002, mm-hmm. someone I knew from high school, but I wasn't at college with obviously, I like scrolled over their away message and they had a link down there and I watched this fucking PowerPoint <laughs> <laughs> and they are all here still. I don't believe them, but they're all here. You know what I mean? But and it was like you must believe a little. But that it was like curious. the spinning like text, you mm-hmm. know, from oh, like man. you know what I mean? Like when you yeah. had to make a PowerPoint in third grade or whatever. I'm telling you, you could not have had me more convinced of every conspiracy in the world when like I was shown those really, really like the the stuff you would find on what you thought was a dark web back then conspiracy yeah, yes, videos about, exactly. about that about the world finances about all sorts of stuff and it was like maybe the second or first time I smoked weed ever <laughs> so I was like <laughs> oh but he I, didn't do drugs ladies and gentlemen remember oh, that yeah, what about that was, also didn't pay for verification there, did you no I didn't I just there's a lot say, of interesting <laughs> counter arguments that I keep putting out that's all I'm very much enjoying some of the Twitch comments that are like Carter is <laughs> Sitting just, between his estranged yes, parents at Christmas. Zeitgeist, couch. it was Zeitgeist. <laughs> oh my twice. God. That's what the documents were called. It was like Zeitgeist Part 1, 9 11. Zeitgeist Part 2, world finances and like the, the dollar and like what the actual like people up top, Illuminati, and like that was like one of the first or second times I smoked weed and I was. Oh man, we're living in the simulation. I was like, man, this, this is going right. to be like kind of funny podcast, the 9 11 episode no. yeah. featuring no. Carter but, yeah. for some yeah. reason. Yeah. Yeah. I promise you that will not be the headline. <laughs> if, you, if you thought you were going to have a job after this, yeah. you were sorely mistaken. I guess not, don't show yeah. your parents this one either. They're going to be like, are these the furry guys? Yeah. <laughs> like, I think the, the funniest part guys. of all, all that, though, is like, it's the typical the kid goes off to college and be like, learn shit. It's like, this I'm was like in my mind. This was like week one or two of me leaving the Rio Grande Valley, moving to Austin, keeping Austin <laughs> weird, yeah, watching it. conspiracy videos, smoking weed, and like it's so, so cool. it's so cliche. <laughs> my my brother, we were a, a lot younger at this point, uh, but he got so into conspiracy theory videos. We download so much shit off Kazaa and like oh, Napster yeah. and shit. How close did you guys become to flat earthers? No, it was, like it, was a, it was a different. Right? It was a different time. I mean, oh, like yeah. the the thing that I, I talked about this a long time ago, but uh, it was uh, loose change. Do you remember this? Why? Yeah, why, yeah I remember this. It, it, I remember it was this. it was the like documentary that was like breaking down like nine <laughs> eleven alter alternative perspectives. I don't fucking even remember. It's been so long. But I was, was it. Wait, was it? Was it uh, the documentarian guy who? Mike, Michael, Michael Moore? Moore? Michael no. Moore? Was no, it Michael no. Moore? No, 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 no. This was like way more indie. Like, I don't even remember the details of okay, it. Okay, yeah, okay. But um, what I, the, the only reason I'm going to bring it up is because then it resulted in something called Luke's Change, which was a mockumentary about the Death Star being an inside job. Oh, awesome. And That's great. they, they awesome. did a whole thing and treated it exactly like the Loose Change thing. And I, it, I remember that being a, a moment of my life of like, this is fucking brilliant. <coughs> this is the peak of content, baby. Yeah. Like, it can't get better than this. They're ahead of the Never curve, did. dude. <laughs> and then I think that same team eventually in like 2014 did a uh, an Anna Kendrick conspiracy video about all the signs in Pitch Perfect that she like knows more than she's allowing the world to know. Awesome. And it's like the fucking funniest. I need to watch that tonight. 
I early, love early in and it was shit. Early in it was great. It was great. How, how are you doing, man? Uh, Just like this podcast say, is. Uh, Welcome to the Kind of Funny Podcast. <laughs> this, this is Kind of Funny Podcast. Each and every week, four, sometimes five best friends gather on this table. Each coming to talk about whatever it is they want to talk about. And we mean whatever it is they want to talk about. <laughs> if you like that, support the madness by going to patreon.com slash kind of funny. Over on patreon.com slash kind of funny, of course, you can get each and every episode ad free. You can watch it live as we record it. Just like Melissa Hagler is and Cody Hagler is. Cody just got freed from an elevator. Greg, I was stuck in an elevator in Florida on our job site uh, for an hour and 15 minutes oh, with no, no airflow and three other guys, and we had to climb out of the roof of the elevator. I would die. What's interesting is Melissa well, Melissa hmm. said earlier in the chat when this all happened live that he was a good husband, maybe brother, because he didn't, he said this elevator looks weird, don't get in the elevator. And then he got Ooh. trapped in there. So Cody, congratulations on surviving. Uh, I need to see footage of you climbing out. I want to. See, I have to imagine you took a TikTok while you did it. Little you know, TikTok. a little TikTok. Uh, of course, on patreoncom slash funny, you could also get a bevy of bonus content, hundreds of episodes of exclusive content that's never been posted anywhere else. Only on patreoncom slash funny, and new content gets added daily. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, no big deal. You can support the show by, of course, subscribing to YouTube.com slash kind of funny. Like, subscribing, and sharing on the podcast platform of your choice when you get it. Leave a review on Apple. Leave a star rating on Spotify. Have a great time. Enjoy the ads. Maybe use, you know, the code words and the sponsors and all that jazz. Because you use that stuff, it's good for us, too. Remember back in the day when... It always throws me when he does this in the middle, when we're still in, like, the intro. Like, is, is, like, is this intro related? that thought. Kind of, but like, okay, now you got my attention. Early, early internet. This is just, I mean, it's it's not that good. Actually, I don't want to get your hopes up, brother. Um, but early internet when ABC was always like, use keyword go. Yeah, AOL yeah. keywords. AOL and stuff. Keyword, yeah. yeah, the AOL keywords were like so huge before. I was thinking Google about that too. Of just like the like, main thing. What, how life is now. Again, this weekend I was thinking about it, partner. And it was this thing of just like when you used to be like, oh, does WWF have a website? Does this have a? You just go to yeah, you know what I mean? Like, like holy just, shit! It does. And you'd go yeah. there and be like, awesome. And there's like no nothing on it. I'm like, oh. I would go to blink 182com yeah. and the Mark Tom and Travis show came out, and all the little car, uh, cartoons were like they would animate. You'd hover, and it's like a little flash. Oh thing yeah, of, like, they had little. Yeah, and it was all interactive. It was so cool, dude. Oh, interesting. Now hold on. Hmm. Now I don't know. It, it, uh, Louise says, send the footage over to Greg Lowell, and then Cody does bring up hashtag Ask right. to follow me. As we all know, there's been a brewing controversy here of much okay. like I don't the know. government with 9 11. Oh, what on. does Cody Hagler have to hide? Because <laughs> he's hiding something over there with his little private Instagram people won't let me in on. I go to Melissa's, I can keep up tangentially uh, with Cody. One of those guys? So, Cody, here's what I'll say I will follow you during this podcast if you tell me there's some elevator related content on that Instagram. Ooh, <laughs> I don't need to see you trapped in there. You know what I mean? I like that. Thank you. I think we need a kind of funny law drama of some kind right yeah I, i'm convinced by your lawyering give me some music what would the music abilities. be i almost just started singing the lawyer the law and order theme song okay melissa tagged greg in the story all right things are developing we'll get to this in a second uh for now i'll remind you of course of some housekeeping uh ps i love you xoxo is incredibly special this week not only is it special because it's already live on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and podcast services it's special because me and janet take you to work with us we go and get a actual video game demo slash preview uh, for a preview event from the Venba dev, Abby, who is a kind of funny best friend and who gave us the exact same demo on camera uh, that he gave all the press people that also reported about it today. So it's a chance to come see what a video game presentation is like and how we like do that. our jobs and what do we do with that. And then, of course, talk to Abby about making Venba and what's it like making a presentation and then hear from a whole bunch of other stuff. And I talk about a viewfinder and yada, yada, yada. Oh, it's a great DPS. episode. Yes. That's a good band, people like. Yeah, yeah, no. no. Uh, thank you to our Patreon they, producers. They've taken BTS and like they're they're allowed. They have it. Okay. They're allowed. They can just have do that. Well, it's like anytime you see BTS, people are always like, "This has nothing to do with the band." It's like, no, it's uh, behind the scenes. But now, behind the scenes, it's been co-opted by right. the group. So can it's we like, take BDSM? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it stand for? Right? Start. <laughs> What's it stand for? Behind it's the not- scenes, man. <laughs> <laughs> <Love> <laughs> Thank you, to our Patreon producers, James Hastings, Casey Andrew, Andrew, Nathan Lamoff. Today we're brought to you by Liquid IV. And hey, 
Let's hear from them right now. This episode is brought to you by Liquid IV. Y'all know how much I love to stay hydrated and Liquid IV makes it easier and better than ever to ensure that I'm always living my best, most hydrated life. And you can too. Liquid IV, the number one powered hydration brand in America is now available in sugar-free with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness. Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than water alone and you can keep your daily routine exciting with three new flavors white peach green grape and lemon lime let me tell you the white peach is good it's real good we hear it kind of funny swear by this stuff one stick of liquid iv in 16 ounces of water hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone real people real flavor real hydrating now sugar free grab your liquid iv hydration multiplayer sugar free in bulk nationwide at costco or get 20 percent off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code kind of funny at checkout that's 20 percent off anything you order when you use promo code kind of funny at liquidiv.com. All right, we're back. Ta, ta, ta. If I did on my keyboard, I could do little sitcom transitions. See, earlier when, when we were talking about you coming this week, I was like, is he going to play stuff? And and Tim was like, I don't think so. I'm like, it'd be cool if he was like our Paul Schaefer. And you just yeah, stood right. over there and then we threw to you every so often, you know? Yeah, but you have to laugh at everything I say. So <laughs> you're you're here for a wedding, and you hit me up, yes. and you're technically you're not here. Like you're the I, 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 what? You can tell the story. <laughs> I don't want to say anything that I can't say. Go for it. No, no, no you mean like traveling wise? Yeah. Or, oh, I just uh, so I'm technically here because I'm going to a wedding in Hawaii, which is pretty badass. Whoa! Oh. Uh, this just happened to be a nice, convenient stop. Sure. Because um, normally you are Nashville. Yeah. Ooh, oh, oh, home shit. of the yeah. music. Good place to be. Right. That's where they invented yeah. music. That's true. Very true. Yep. Yes. Well, like Never had existed exist. before in mm-hmm. Nashville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't some one of y'all go to Nashville recently? Was that you? We Tim both and I did. both did. Yeah, yeah, we oh, no way. SummerSlam yeah. last year, yeah. How was that? I did not realize you were there. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, now well, I thanks know. for saying hi to us. Did y'all do anything notable? We went to the Opry. Nice. Went to SummerSlam. That's grand. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I think those are the big highlights. Any, oh. any good food? Yeah. Oh, that's a good food. Any memorable food? Biscuits. Mm. It biscuits. really seems like Carter, you're leading them down. At yeah, the no, I'm like, yeah, what's <laughs> happening? Yeah. Burger? Guess what? That was supposed. <laughs> that to was be mine. me. <laughs> I made that for you. It was made out of human. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so you're making a little stop here because you're over on, oh, on yeah. this coast area, um, and you hit me up. You're like, can I come see the studio? I'm like, yes, you can fucking come see the studio. <laughs> so I've, it's been a blast having you here today. Um, how, how's the experience been? It's been fantastic. I uh, got here and hold up in the conference room. And pretending like I work here for a little bit. It was cool. Yeah, Having someone that, like that room's rarely used for like someone just sitting down working. Like maybe a meeting, maybe a call or whatever. Seeing him in there all day, I was like, oh, this feels yeah. legit. Using all the rooms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Love it. <laughs> I, I walked it. with big headphones at the big cans on. You yeah. Know? We're down a bunch of people for vacations and work things and yada yada. And I mm. came in late. So I came in and it was just Joey and Cool Greg there. And so I sat down and talked to Joey a little bit and blah, blah, And I looked towards the conference room, but the reflection of the spare bedroom neon, is so, I, I had blocked him out. Yeah. And so he eventually came out like 10 minutes later. I was like, oh, hey, what's up? Holy shit. <laughs> I see some hot chicken comments. That's also where I was curious if y'all got a chance to have the Nashville staple. No hot chicken? <laughs> I've Well, I've been before. Okay. And so I had gone uh, back when Nashville was on TV. I came through and did the a show in Nashville. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Nice. Yeah, great show. My friend Chip Eston gave me a tour of the set and all that jazz. Uh, and I went to Hattie B's back there. We have a thing. She doesn't oh, wow, yeah? know about it. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had a hot chicken there. I had a Hattie B's. Nice. It was like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, all right. It's okay. If that's yeah. kind of, I, I had fried chicken guy, a lot. The Hattie B's is kind of like the touristy version of the... Yeah, yeah, they're, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I'm not I've always just wanted the hot chicken without the bread. Was, I'm not a big hmm. you know, sandwich I thought you were going to say without the spice. No, like I, lo- I <laughs> just want to taste like what the spice is like because I love... Oh, you I mean, mean without the breading? Like, yeah, well, without the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Like, I don't want it in a sandwich. Sure. Is what I'm saying. No, I, I don't mind the breading. He wants the breading. He wants you know, the breading. I just, he just want chicken tenders. I don't want I it in a Spanish. See, he wants see, spicy chicken tenders. Did I, I got gotcha. Spanish? I meant sandwich. <laughs> Wait, is that, was that Cody? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, well, yes, that is Cody. Uh, Kevin's prepping it for when we're ready. To okay. Um, I, lately, I've been getting a lot of proposition chicken, which is... How is that? Here. We like that? It's delicious. We like that? I get it all the time now, and I get the rotisserie with... Um, lately, you know, I think it automatically comes with a bunch of chopped up cucumbers with little sliced cherry tomatoes and put a lot of lemon juice in there. And that's so deli- mm. oh, man, it's delicious. Let me yeah. Tell you. Yeah. But it comes, I get the side of habanero sauce and I dip the rotisserie chicken in there. Yeah. It's now you're talking. really damn now you're talking. <laughs> It now is you're really talking. damn Count good. Count Press bro. says, Carter, what's your favorite hot chicken spot? Mine would have to be Prince's Hot Chicken, which is the OG creator. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Apparently there, the, as the legend goes, 
it was created by a, a couple who the husband cheated on the wife and to get back at him, she dumped a bunch of, would it be cayenne or no? Sure. Paprika. Yeah, pa cayenne, right? Yeah, 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 and dumped it as revenge and he loved it. And that, and oh, hot chicken dang. was born. Is so, okay. So I believe I saw this documentary on David Cho's Netflix yeah, show yeah. and they talked about the history of hot chicken and mm -hmm. they did the whole like Hattie B's, ah, it's a little bit more commercial or whatever, but let's go to like the actual spots. And a, every time they went, it's like everybody had their own, all the locals had their own input of like, no, that's actually yeah. the spot to go to. And every time, just like, take off that bread. Let me get a bite of that. <laughs> that shit looks Still so stuck good. on the bread. I love a spice, man. I'll tell you what. Okay, so I have followed Cody Hagler. And guess what? No stories. Wow. No posts about it. So now it we're going to block Cody Hagler. Ooh. But again, Melissa did come through with this video, Kevin, if you can put it up, of Cody being uh, brought out of this elevator. That sounds so dramatic. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my God. It's like a legit thing. The firefighters are there. Oh, my God. Here comes oh, Cody. Dude. <laughs> Looking like a guy who doesn't know how to use an Instagram. There it is. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. That is so scary. I would be so freaking terrified um, of that. Follow Cody. Reports. Reports. Kevin got stuck in an elevator once. It's like, that's one of those things that is just the scariest thing in the world I, and like i, I thinking about this I, I feel like it's such a like it, it wasn't me but i still feel like that story it, it resonates is in my it, mind is that scary yeah. yeah yeah stuck in an elevator i find inconvenient when the elevator falls that's that's scary. Well, I feel the like idea is that it could fall at any my moment, first you know? my, i no I no great yeah. one note on that i was like five <laughs> I, i've heard this yeah you with your mom right yeah it was awful but that's just because you don't like being with your mom though that's true well no i was scared of elevators for a really long time I've gotten over it. I get uncomfortable every time I'm in it, though. So. Okay. I, I, my thing is, like, an elevator has a function, and that function is to bring you up or down. Mm -hmm. And when it breaks even a little bit, then all bets are off the table. Sure. Right? Yeah. You're one step closer to plum plummeting. I just death. feel like if and I, in the same way that quicksand in the 80s, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like Amazing. the 90s made it extremely clear that elevators are not safe. Like with the obsession, the amount of Tower of Terror movies we got, mm. Mission Impossible, even in the beginning of that shit. Oh, yeah. Elevators are scary. What was the, what was the, up at the top. What a great set. What was the scary it? movie where they're stuck in the elevator with the devil? Was it the devil? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that that was was where you don't know which one it is. Yeah, that was a good movie. It's pretty good. Is it called Devil? Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. Turn of the Shyamalan. I I'm, hate elevators. I'm just saying, I, you know what? I don't know. I'm not, I, I'm, I, them stopping, I feel like they stop all the time every day. Something goes wrong. Not every elevator in the world, don't get me wrong, but like enough elevators. But I, you don't hear about elevators falling that often. I guess that is a good point. It's the same way like I talk about roller breaks. coasters. Where yeah. it's like, yes, sometimes people die on roller coasters. But like overall, there are millions of people every day that are we totally okay and nothing. Oh, yeah. Maybe it like gets stuck or something. But you like, see that video of the one okay. where it was like disconnected? No. Oh man, that was a really oh, where it, like puts you onto the next part of the track or something. No, no, no. This is just like somebody who recorded. I'm not sure what theme park it was, but it was the two pipes going up from the ground oh. with like the big block that are connected to the track. But there's like as the as the cart is going by, they are not connected anymore. So like the track is floating oh, off of the pipes shit. that are holding no. it in place. Nope. And clearly that got reported, obviously, and like there's been no injuries or whatever, but. They had to shut that shit down, but my goodness, I was just, you know, I was at Disneyland this weekend and, or this past weekend, every ride I was going on, I'm just like, what can I go? Like, <laughs> expensive and everything, you know what I mean? I don't know if, yeah, here, I was going to say. Oh, North here it Carolina is. Carolina Coaster, Carolina wins. When I rode. You can see I, the, the top, the top uh, part is woo. disconnected from the pole. There's like a crack. I don't yeah. see yeah. it. Yeah. It, it, I don't the, see it. You see it right, the, the crack right there. Oh, oh shit. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> terrifying. I rode Rock and Roller Coaster when I was like 12 or 13, and then someone died on it like a day or two after. It's terrifying. But I think it was like a Do you blame yourself? Did you do something to it? I think you screwed the seatbelt. For a joke, and then there it was. <laughs> for a joke, <laughs> took a couple Classic of screws screw with the seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm always like the, yeah, I, I'm always like the. What's the positive side of things that we could look at? Positive right? and yeah, like yeah, sure. well, right side of life. Optimus I tried to, I try to be every once in a while. But Glass like, is half full. If there's a really bad plane wreck, it's like there's no better time to fly after a plane wreck. Sure, that's true. Like people are going to be the on chances? their A game is and making you? sure that nothing's wrong. And like June 29th, 2006, a 12 year old Whoa. boy visiting from Fort Campbell, oh, Kentucky, Rock was found Damn. to be unresponsive after that the ride been ended. When it was, though so, his father administered CPR. So what I was Kevin thinking is like the after this footage went super viral, mega viral of this roller coaster being disconnected, 
being at Disneyland, I was like, you know what? I feel safer because they know that video went viral yeah. last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are triple, quadruple checking everything. Absolutely. You looking at this game, this guy, this over here, Cody Hagler. Greg, it finally uploaded. <laughs> fool me oh, once. Yeah. You've been reporter for fool spam. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> a fool can't be fooled again. All right? Yeah. You got your follow. You shit the bed. That's you the said thing. you were waiting on the follow request. You got your dream, Cody. This is what you've been begging for in the chat for so many weeks. You got your dream. And guess what? You shit the bed. There was no content. Now, Andy has to raise your child. He's been begging for this? What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Oh, the chat's over here. Well, I, I make fun of him on Instagram being private. Oh. So then there was a whole chat movement of, oh, man, go follow him. Go follow him. Make his little life. His life sucks. I, ne I never thought That's to terrible. ask what that meant, but now I, oh, wow, okay. Follow Cody. Okay, wow. Help him out. Nothing good's going on in his life. Help him. Be nice to him. <laughs> elevator <Why>? guy. <laughs> like, he keeps getting stuck in elevators. stuck in an elevator. <laughs> like, way more scared than you would be, apparently. I'm sorry. And now I'm just sorry. being I crazy. fantasize about it sometimes, getting trapped in there, a little, little podcast with whoever I'm with. <laughs> You know what I mean? Microphone. Oh. Elevator podcast. Yeah, yeah. Pick your pee corner. Yeah. Do I look more golden, by the way? Put me in there. With, hey, who is Norm? Who is Norm on Cheers? Nick? Norm on Cheers. Yeah. Uh, Pete Way? Not Pete Wentz. Um, Pete Wentz. <laughs> that's, that's where I am, too. Something Wentz. Um, yeah, George Wentz. George Wentz. Put George me and George Wentz, Wentz, Wentz in an elevator. He live. Put me and George Wentz in an elevator, Tim. You want to be it. stuck in an elevator with George Wentz? Oh, we'd have such a good time. Maybe he's got a six pack. You, would you ask him about? <laughs> I guess it's like a a, 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 a beer. <laughs> I'd or, ask him about everything, man. He's you know he's a true Chicagoan too. Would you ask him about when he was on Fletch in the movie Fletch? No, I don't. I don't remember him being in Fletch. Yeah, my Fletch. The, my Fletch the knowledge is really just about the John Hamm version. That's fair. What did you think now, of that version? Huh? What did you think of that? Version? I enjoyed it, but didn't think about it again until this very fucking moment there when I was go. like, oh, I watched that Fletch movie with John Hamm. Sure did. Here's something. That's What's like, a movie that you guys have not thought about? Since you've seen it until this exact moment, let me flush. Oof, it's hard to think about something you haven't thought. I know. About. I That's think really I pulled tight. one. That's you saying that though? Give it to me. Fuck, I forget the name of it. Oh God, but it's just I, get me there. I'll get you there. Yeah. Oh man, give me close. I'll get oh the man, rest I'm gonna I'm gonna need some help to get here. Yeah, well, I, I think it's called it? Willow Who's Willard. Something like that. Willard. The rat movie. It's the rat movie. Yeah. Willard. The guy, the guy from, from Charlie's Angels. Yeah, and from Back to the Future. Yeah, Xavier. What's Chris Glover? Yes. Yes. Willard. That's yeah. That's I saw that in theaters. Why? He was friends with rats. I don't <laughs> he know. Was. He's a weird dude. Yeah. That was, that was, <laughs> that weird was dude. fucking weird. This is so random, but the one that just came to my mind for me was Toy Soldiers. Oh, oh great, 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 great movie. I think I must have seen like YouTube video or something recently, but yeah. Oh, oh Small, small, small Soldiers. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that what it's called? Small, small Soldiers? soldiers. Yeah. Toy yeah. Soldiers is different than Small Soldiers. Did I say, what, what did I say? Phil yeah. Hartman. Small Soldiers. Phil Hartman was in, in the Little one. action figure dude. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. a dark the Gorgonites. toy story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, I saw that word hasn't even popped up in my head until just now. Amazing. You know what? No, not Patch Adams. Patch Adams. That works, though. Haven't thought about that one. Jack. Sure. I haven't thought about that either. The Robin sure. Williams we yeah. Jack. Robin Williams. Where he's a, he's a giant child. You know a movie that I, I his that I don't talk enough about is Bicentennial Man. <laughs> Tell me about that. In Greg. review, what are we doing? Let's have some fun. You know what I mean? AI Robots. And Bicentennial Man. Put it, did we do Terminator, Terminator, right? No. We yeah, did fucking toss, we did fucking toss Bicentennial Man in there. What would be funny is a... <laughs> well, what what would be funny, honestly, is a kind of funny in review where we're kind of like going through the movies of kind of funny lore. Yeah. And we watched sure. The Departed. We watched Bicentennial Man. We watched... Are we putting Santa Claus in there or no? It had its moment. Well, you already did it. Yeah. Did okay, okay. Interview. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah, we watched like whatever movies get brought up the most on these podcasts yeah. or the holiday movies. Cameron uh, Kennedy says Heat versus The Heat. Oh, yes. wow. That's yeah. a good one. That's a great one. I feel like I bring up Goodfellas once every two weeks on these shows. Goodfellas is a good I want you to know. Oh, man. Someone said, you Your say? Highness. That's a fucking great movie, even though it's ridiculous and stupid. Y'all know that one? The With uh, uh, James Danny Franco McBride. and Danny McBride, yeah. And Natalie like, Portman. Uh, yeah. That's the one movie they conned her into being in, and she was like, I'll never work with these guys. Oh, again. is that what happened? I don't know. I, I remember there being some weirdness about She was just like, I regret doing that movie yeah, so bad because it wasn't very it was, good. It was like so bad it's good kind of thing. I, I think I watched like the first five minutes of it because that was when I was like, I'm, a, I mean, I'm, a, I'm still a pretty big Danny McBride fan, but like oh, yeah. he had a He's good. Nice. Just good track record there leading up to Eastbound and Down, where he did like Hot Rod and a bunch of other things. Mm. And I was like, I'll give this a Hot shot. Rod and I just remember watching, five, five, you know, like, you know, 50 seconds into the movie, you're like, oh, I've made a terrible mistake by <laughs> oh, watching this. Yeah. I rented this film and I can't get through it. Yeah, I remember your highness not being very good. I, as everybody knows, I am a man of moral fiber. 
my word is my bond. I don't yep. break it. You know what I mean? I, I speak out on a lot of issues others would find controversial and I take you're a not stance. afraid you're not afraid to take on the hard topic I take right? a stance right yeah. and I stand by that stance but as you know I'm not afraid to reevaluate when I get new information all right mm -hmm. that's the trait of a smart person and I like to think I'm a smart person yeah Steve Jobs however I threw the gauntlet down a long time ago and I cut off my nose despite my face and it was a gamble that I don't regret but you know maybe it was I didn't bet on the right horse but I've had my world rocked recently okay by the TikTok algorithm. Sure. Because I'm just doing my usual scrolls, seeing what's up, what burgers this person going to eat kind of stuff. And <laughs> I scroll, right? Is that what you're looking at? <laughs> <laughs> I scroll, right? And I get my usual movie clip, but this time it's not The Martian. All right? Mm. This time, it's a beautiful Henry Cavill. And I'm like, what's this all about? Oh, the one where you're shirtless? And then it was, oh, this is Mission Impossible. And I watched this right. entire clip of Mission Impossible, and oh. I was, and it ended, and I was like, that was a pretty good clip. Oh! Like, that was a pretty good clip, Henry Cavill and Simon Pegg. Great. And, My entire body just got like, yeah. are you like Holy an shit. Mission Impossible? Yeah, usually? if Is you remember when they did the one where he reloaded his arms, they yeah, wouldn't yeah, let him sh shave different. his mustache. Not, you, don't, you don't like that? No, they, I no, like that a lot. About it. They wouldn't yeah, let him shave his mustache for the Superman reshoots for Justice League. That was one of the many problems with Justice League. But I said, this is what I'm going to die. This is the hill I'm going to die on. And then the movie came out. It was just dog shit. I was like, well, I'm fucking stuck. I said I was going to, you know what I mean? You're eating your words. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, it's one of those seen fallout yet no i haven't seen any, mission, seen impossible. any mission impossible i mean that's a good one to start with you might like that movie a lot greg yeah it would it help you out if at one point i told you that rebecca ferguson has a scene with henry cavill where she says and i quote the snyder cut was excellent would that uh, help i mean you? i well, can i see who rebecca ferguson is oh she's just I had a teacher in fourth grade named Mrs. Gustafson. Does she look like that? <laughs> I can confirm that she probably doesn't look anything like Mrs. Gustafson. But I don't know how much of a baddie. Does she Mrs. look Gustafson, like Rebecca Romaine? Uh, no, she does not. I mean, I wouldn't say she looks like Rebecca Romaine, but I think that she's. Oh, this woman. Yeah, she's a really good actor. I've seen Susan her. She's in Dune. She's in Dune. She's, oh, she's like, British uh, or something? Yeah. Uh, yes. There you go. Thanks, Scottish. Damn, see, there Scottish. it is. There She's a badass. She's great in that movie. I'll she likes. It. She likes the Snyder Cut. That's cool. She. I mean, she. I. I I'm not. Am I, am I wrong, Tim? I'm not lying. No, right? a, I think it's the extended edition. Yeah, it's, yeah, extended, it's, it's in the bathroom scene where she's fixing him up, and she's yeah. like, "By the way, <laughs> black and white was." Well, the lie. The one. So was I'm the watching. So I'm like, Simon Pegg crushing it as always. Yeah, dude. You know what I mean. You know I'm a big Simon Pegg fan. You're a Henry Cavill just like untouchable as always. Tom Cruise, <laughs> great. You know what I mean. But then, it's, it's then, wild. But then that, Alec Baldwin's like doing some accent I didn't like. Or some, no, or he's some got a mouth. Bostonian accent. It's fine. It's mm. his accent. That's what he got from The Departed. He never shed it. <laughs> it, <laughs> affects you. That it affects your mind and you can't it, get away from it. It's funny because like I know I know Greg Miller just, I think as a, a starting point, doesn't like movies. That's not always true. Doesn't like you movies? Can, is that what you said? Yeah. Movies can win you not over. His you can be a fan. But overall, I'd, I'd say you, your starting place is not wanting to watch movies. Yeah, that's true. Action movies, even more so the case. Sure. Like You, you kind of get lost in the action and like with Mission Impossible... That's kind of the point, so I can see it not being your thing. However, there's something. There's a lot of things. However. There's, there's so much in the Mission Impossible franchise that I just feel would tickle your pickle, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> like there's like yeah. The things that you just mentioned here, but the, Tom Cruise, if you like Tom Cruise, oh, man. I got nothing against him. Tom Cruise, I feel like him and I are on the wrong foot. Oh, just that we are just we're on different sides of the same equation. Don't. He just wants to save movie theaters, and okay. I want them to be defeated. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? God, I thought and you were again, I don't want them Tom. to be extinct. I'm just like... Fucking loosen it up and put them on the services. You know what I mean? Let me buy them there. Let me watch at home. I got a nice TV. Ooh, there's been, yeah, there's been. You think you're gonna get no me into the fucking right theater now. to watch Barbie? <laughs> in the last few months, <laughs> Barbie. But no. but on top of that, you're talking about um, your boy Simon Pegg. Like my man, debatably one of his just best characters ever. Oh, right? Run, Fat Can Boy, run. Names. The fact that they have oh, two yeah. tech guys and they're like, we can't choose between them. We'll just throw them both <laughs> in there. Yeah, it's awesome. Jeremy Renner, fantastic Great. in it. And I know a lot of people are. Like, I don't really like Jeremy Renner. I like Jeremy Renner. Watch this fucking movie. I mean, you're gonna love him now. He was great. Oh, Paula Patton's was great. All, Matt Robin Pugh was great. What? Robert Pattinson's in it. Yeah, our Pats is in it. Mm. Again, he pops out of the toilet and is like, Snyder Cut, not that bad. Did you watch <laughs> Why is he, he's a ghoulie? Cut he's a ghoulie? It's, it's, that's weird. It's, he's a ghoulie. The whole that's a, half that's a movie I haven't thought of in a while. <laughs> For me, it was Run, Fat Boy, Run. Oh, that Remember that movie. Simon Pegg one? Yeah, it was a good movie. His yeah. his ex is now with Hank Azaria, and then mm -hmm. to prove a Look point, he Azaria. runs for a he runs a marathon. Yeah, and Simon Pegg is like, and this again hurts my soul to say because I won't watch the Mission Impossible thing. Simon Pegg after Shaun of the Dead was a man I, I'll follow him to battle. Mm -hmm. You put yeah. Simon Pegg in a motion picture, I'm gonna go watch it. 
know what I mean? Star Trek. He was Ty became a Star Trek fan. I guess. You know what I mean? Tom Weirdly Banks, enough, thing. What was that other movie? It was you, what you went the one you said was Run Fat by Ron? Yeah. And then there was Britney Runs a Marathon, right? I don't know. That, that was another that movie. Like Britney Runs a Marathon. Was that like that two years solid, ago? That was a solid movie. No, I was gonna say they're very similar, very similar plots. Huh. Those movies. Yeah, I don't know. Where they both had to get their shit together, like so they choose to run a marathon again. I mean, that is, if you want to get into fucking conspiracy <laughs> theories right now, I was like, how do we allow both of those to and exist the at the same time? And the water uh, Fun fact about me, first of all, is that I was born and raised overseas. I don't know if we all knew this. In Kenya. Did I ever mention that? No. No, yeah, that's Can't you awesome. tell by my <laughs> accent? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was literally born and raised there for 18 years. And so one of the weird oh, things shit. with movies is that Kenya was like, until the 2000s, was like a decade behind a little bit. Mm. And so like movies came later and... The internet was super slow for a long time. And so I feel like I caught up on everything in my like late teens. And so like even Mission Impossible, I only saw the first one, I think. There's been like a million of those probably, right? Seven. Uh, seven? Close enough. Better than yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but it's it's weird because it's still like... Uh, How did Spice World affect you all? <laughs> How did not, the Spice Girls in the Spice World? Not much. The, the <laughs> Can you imagine that heartbreak? Low. It gets there. You're like... This is awesome, and this band, I can't wait. Oh, they 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 broke up ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's basically what it was like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I've often wondered this because like I'll throw shit at you, and you respond with, uh, uh I say draft. It's the final version, <laughs> the majority of the time, so quickly, and I I'm often like, damn, he nailed so many elements of this, and like I. I talk to Cam all the time. So I, I know yeah, his yeah. process. I know how he works. I know what he likes. Like, so when I pitch him something, I know when I need to over explain, hey, let's maybe use this imagery. I know you haven't seen this franchise. Maybe this, maybe that, whatever. Sure. I've never had to, I guess sometimes I give you some uh, uh, direction, but like you seem to know every theme song. Like you I seem to know I every kind sound. I overcorrected probably like when I came to the States and like caught up on everything so much. And just because like that kind of, I went the like media route, and so mm. I've I've caught up on a big amount. But there is these still weird like sometimes I feel like a homeschool kid a little bit because like I'll miss just l random references here and there and like random movies and music. You don't have to explain. Uh, we have Snow Mike Mike in the office. We understand <laughs> completely what it's like to have someone that has absolutely no understanding <laughs> of any movie or cultural thing before 2000. Yeah, when you yeah. live in Tahoe, it's very similar to Kenya. It's exactly. It's like they have island. very little uh, exposure <laughs> to the outside world. Yeah. Well, has there been a uh, KF intro that I've hit you up about? No, I didn't know. That you were just like, I I need to do research on this. Um, Tell you what, I have the list and I will find one, yeah. I'm sure. Let's scope oh. it out. Let's look I have at this. My, uh, Kind of funny. We should bring. There really up is some a lot of, of these intros while we're waiting. Okay, let's see. I knew. I remember there was one. Um, maybe Fast and Furious. I wasn't super familiar with, mm. which maybe is blasphemous to say here. No, I no. Uh, when I first joined, kind of funny. I had never watched any of them. Really? Yeah. There was like only two out though. Even John Wick. Which I watched is seven in theaters there. But I was no, not uh, as familiar I mean, with that. Doesn't have, have like have a super iconic theme now? necessarily. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I feel like most of them are pretty well known. Who was Maybe that? Magic Mike. Kevin asks, "Have <laughs> yeah. you watched them now? Uh, which Fast ones? Oh, Fast and Furious. No. Oh man. Uh, and this is a dumb question. Now's not the time. <laughs> this is a dumb question. Mm -hmm. We were, you and I were both into Fast and Furious before we started doing oh, yeah. it, right? Okay. Oh yeah. Why was I so into it? I just liked him, right? I like. Oh, it was Tokyo yeah. Drift. That's where we all came back around well, to it, right? Five. I mean, yes, Th Tokyo Drift when people came around, but five was a moment when everyone was like, yo, this is legitimately amazing. Coming it's around, not yeah. just a meme or anything. Okay. And um, that was like around me starting. I, I did not get to see Fast Five with you guys. I started IGN like a couple months after that. Okay. But you and Mike Pereira and all them were obsessed with it. And I was like, oh my God, my people, I'm here. Sure. And then we all saw Six together in theaters and it was an amazing moment. It's a beautiful moment. I'll okay. never forget that's it. How that, that's how that shook down. Yeah. That makes sense. That, pass, that checks out. Carter, I'm trying to find that your GameCube... Yeah. Is that on? Wh where is that? Oh, 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 oh! Maybe Instagram or something. Yeah, I think it was on Twitter. Thing. That's where I saw it. Yeah, that's where I saw it. Now I'm already imagining the kind of funny jingle for when we eventually do um, the Office in review. Oh man! To have Nick Scarpino watch. The Office can't can't wait for you guys to watch that. <laughs> have you not seen any of it? I've 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 he watched a few like episodes it. of The Office. For so. whatever reason, I, I the humor of The Office just does not vibe with me. You know, me. there's a, a lot of too dry it's one me. of those that like almost everyone likes and there's a lot of people who are just like don't get it. There's there's been a few of those in my life. I had a friend of mine that was like, "Let's sit down and watch some Always Sunny in Philadelphia." And I watched Ooh. a few episodes of that and I got into the first season and then I just I was just like it's a little too much. 
for me. So yeah. I don't think I've watched it since. But I get, again, I understand why people like it. Sure. I respect it. Just not for me. Committing to the office was one of the best decisions I ever made mm. in terms of watching stuff. Where it's like, I was with you in the sense of like, I've seen this and it's kind of funny. The memes are funny, whatever. But like, I don't know about this. And then a couple years back, like right pre-pandemic, but I started watching them and fucking love that show. It is so damn funny. I mean, I just got into Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Like just as if. I mean, you needed to wait to see if that was a fad. Right. So what, you no, right thing, what right? I wanted to wait for, Greg, real talk, is just to make sure that Amazon was going to screw the pooch with the Lord of the Rings show. Sure. And now I'm like, cool. Now it's done. You know what I mean? They're never going to do it again. You I'm got good. you got the ultimate amount there. Exactly. They will do it again, though, right? Like, Kevin, oh, yeah, you, of course. You got this GameCube <laughs> thing, thing ready? Right? <laughs> yeah, I freaking love this. This is the talent oh, outside boy. of the KF stuff that Carter can do. <laughs> GameCube is the best console, by the way, just so everyone's <laughs> on the same page. How long I ago did that get to Kenya? <laughs> yeah, I like just got a Pokemon ago. game on GameCube. What's up? There was a Pokemon game. Stadium, on right? Coliseum. Yeah. Oh, Coliseum. No, it was like some yeah, weird the Gale of Darkness. Oh, That's oh, the one. I, I was like, well, I thought it was a fan made game. Can you press play again? Covers are having issues. <sighs> actually, <sighs> it's actually is a perfect example, though, because GameCube was my first console because it was like we were late to the N64 era, you know. Huh. I guess I'm also on the younger side compared to. All you old fogies. <laughs> that was working. Oh, now we're re yeah. Instagram on web, it just is not the worst, dude. There we go. Fix it, Zuck. <laughs> Slap Come the on, bass. dude. <laughs> Controller sounds. <laughs> It's so dope. It's <laughs> amazing. Now I'm just going on a journey right yeah. now. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, Outrun, the uh, Sega oh, arcade oh, racing game. About. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's amazing. So dude. What do y'all think of when you think GameCube, like game-wise? Twin melee. Snakes. Mm. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, Metal Gear Solid, okay. Twin Snakes. Double Dash and Melee. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. remember it having a handle for no reason. Oh, so you could take uh, it to your friend's house and play. No, no reason. No reason. Yeah. thought it was stupid. <laughs> like it's so you, no you can ward off like intruders. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. Wait, get out how get how old are you, Carter? To it. Uh, 28. 28. Yeah, okay, okay. That's about what I expected. <laughs> when you said I was like, fuck, you like 22 or some shit. It's like another no, no. Roger moment. I, is I, Roger 22 or is he? Younger? I think Roger's 15. Roger's We're not quite 14. sure. What about He's 24, Bless? I think, now. Blessing also. But he was 21 at one point. <laughs> I nice. sent in some photos to assets. Um, I just wanted to show off the beautiful little cupcake that I had at. Super Mario, Super Nintendo World Ooh. at Universal. Uh, on Wednesday, I went to Disneyland, and I finally got to ride Rise of Resistance. Right. After a long delay, I was supposed to ride it in January of 2020. And, oh, what a cute cup. And I was unable to make it, and I was so heartbroken, and I was, like, it was broken all day. It kept on going down. It kept on going down. We were supposed to be on it by, like, 1 p.m., and by the, it's, like, 8 p.m., 9 p.m., and I'm seeing that... Andrea Renee was like 10 spots ahead of us. Their group got in, and then the ride shut down again. The, the park was over. Very, very heartbroken. But I was like, I'll go yeah. back in July and ride Rise of the Resistance. And mm -hmm. the pandemic hit, so we never went back. But I finally got to go on it, and I like had just tears in my eyes the whole time. My, I, afterward, my dad not being able to stop talking about it, just being like, I, like, I cannot get over what we just experienced. It's kind of unbelievable. Mm. It is so, so magic. I guess, I mean, I know you can watch the whole thing online if you want to or whatever, but no spoilers. What is it? Is it what's unbelievable about it? Like the scope, the scale of the people? Or? The, uh, yeah, pretty much everything okay. you just mentioned. I think, like, I love that so much of these rides, because of the long waits, people are having, the, these companies are having to invest in the line and the waiting and mm. even that is really cool and an experience. And essentially, you're put on a ship and you're trying to get away and Oscar Isaac's talking to you on the screen. They fly and, now. And then it looks like you're <laughs> flying on the ship because the screens are all LEDs or, you know, sure. L whatever. So it looks like you're flying off into space. And then the First Order takes over and they tractor beam your ship in. And then they're like pr preparing to board the First Order. And then, then the doors open and you're no longer in the line that you just came from outdoors you're now looking into what is a first order ship and it is all like the glossy black everywhere yeah, 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 and yeah. all the people in there that then tell you to get in line for the ride 
They're all first order people. They're all assholes. They're like, get in line. No, don't ask any questions. You know, like it's so badass and interactive and it's cool for me as a 35 year old. And again, I can't imagine being a 12 year old experiencing this magic. And you go into a room and it's like, all right. And then uh, Kylo Ren, the little uh, hologram that they have that makes it look like he's above you. He's like, stay here. We're going to come back and question all of y'all. And he leaves. No, he doesn't leave because suddenly the door starts. You see like a little, the door falls down and they're like, come on, we're getting you off this. It is the coolest fucking thing ever. And then you are on a track that is the trackless sort of little ride, and you're just kind of zipping around. Now, you know, I get scared awesome. of motion sick and stuff, and I know that there's a drop at one point. Is there's it too a drop much at the very, very end, and I don't think it's that bad at all. No, it's, I think you'd be okay with it. Yeah. It, it's definitely more of an immersive thing as opposed to, like, a thrill ride. Okay. Um, I, I feel like even then, like, some of the drop stuff is more exaggerated by video walls, sure. so you feel... More well, it's like, like when falling. we did the Falcon, where I, I had to have a water bottle on my feet to be like, all right, cool, we're not going that crazy. Exactly. The water it, bottle isn't very moving that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is similar to that, but I, I, it's, all, it's even more immersive than that. Yeah. But like to Andy's point, like I think the coolest thing about the ride is you don't know where it begins and ends. Yeah. It's kind of just this experience where like there's a lot of rides. Like Indy has a great queue. Like there's some uh, some of the lines are awesome at Disneyland. Rise of the Resistance, it's so seamless of like, oh, it's just the ride. And like it, the way that it starts, like the storytelling stuff, and then it just goes into this moment of realizing like, mm. oh, it already started. It's unbelievable. And then it just keeps ratcheting it up and up and up where it's not just one type of ride. It's like four different rides in one, but like all of it feels appropriate. And whenever you're kind of like in a stalling station area there's like a story reason for it happening it's like very damn cool yeah i can't wait to do it again. the the high-tech animatronics that are, that are now present that again these i remember watching one of the imagineer documentaries where just showing like all the different points of articulation that these animatronics have and how expressive with their movements they are now compared to the old pirates ones which sure, are sure, you sure. know very you know <laughs> that they look the way they look and we still love them for that but these newer versions are just so ridiculously like detailed and, uh, you know, Kylo's getting pissed off at you and you escape and then uh, you go into another room and suddenly you, a lightsaber from the ceiling just starts bursting through and you're like, oh my God, he's coming after so, us. It is so thrilling and badass and it is like easily the number one thing that I experienced. Number two that I experienced. Churro. Just Nintendo War Land. N Tell Nintendo me about World Mario Kart though. Was it cool? No. <laughs> the line I didn't think so. I heard, yeah. the line in the lead up to Mario Kart awesome as hell because mm. they know that you're going to be in line for a long time and it's a lot of cool looking props it's a lot of awesome looking just decor right you are in Bowser's castle um, that's the Mickey and Minnie ride that broke down and I was very very sad Ooh. Um, but the, the line in the lead up to Mario Kart really really cool the Mario Kart ride I wish it wasn't a game it's four people in a cart and you have these little visors on, these little like Mario visors on, and when you sit down, there's a little piece of clear glass that you then stick onto your visor, and it's an AR visor. And you and your four squad mates are in this Mario Kart, and you have to turn at the same time together so that your cart actually turns. And the whole time you are collecting uh, uh, blocks, you know, the little question blocks yeah, or whatever, yeah. to then shoot turtle shells at these AR characters that are in your, in your visor. You can still see the world behind you, but like you'll see Bowser like riding in front of you. You turn around, like he'll stay there, and if you turn back, he's still there. But the whole time, you're like missing out on the ride because you're trying to, you have to look at the, the opponents that you're trying to shoot turtle shells at. You have to beat Team Bowser. You can't shoot your shells at Toad or Luigi or any of the sure. Mario characters. It all has to be the Koopas and all that stuff. And... You're so concentrated on doing that that you're just kind of missing the ride, and Man. I was pretty disappointed it's by that. You. But the so, lead up, awesome as hell. The the question I have that I haven't been able to ask anybody I trust about this, and I feel like you and me right in the same point when it comes to this. Does the music hit specifically at the end? Because I've seen the video, I know what the ride looks like. I haven't been on it myself, and the final song that plays as you're like getting to the the finish line, I'm it's like, I can't even imagine experiencing this. Classic does Mario. it hit or does it not? Because I can imagine it not. It, I would say no, Damn. because I just, like, th there were moments that I'm, like, smiling at what's happening outside of the AR, but then you get back and you're like, 
I want to win this game. I want to beat Team Bowser. It's like, I wish it was just a thrill ride. That's yeah. the thing is it seems so obvious to make Mario Kart like a ride. Yeah. You know, like how dope would that be going through Rainbow Road and shit? Oh my you know? God. Totally. And, and, and they do that. And they, they do right. like a, a decent job of trying to show you that through the AR goggles. And they have the props in the actual world that are Mario Kart looking themed. But I, the whole, t if you're going to try to win the game, like everybody wants to try to win the game, you're not really looking at the rest of the ride. And I, that is a massive bummer to me. So that's like the world itself, just being, just seeing all the everything walking in is just like so magical. And the restaurant was dope as hell. I had some spaghetti. It was delicious. I had a, toadstool uh garlic knots that were great that's the cupcake good. was incredible mm. um highly recommend getting the cupcake i didn't get to go to rogers the musical it was, on, it was being shown but i was yeah. like how long is that experience i think it's like a 30 45, minute thing uh, 30 45 minutes it's also online did you do the tie fighter not tie fighter the millennium falcon in star wars land isn't that like yeah. i guess it's a screen thing it's yeah the, i had been on that one before okay, which nice. was you know it, that one's fun like yeah. i think like the yeah. light the lead up is also really cool but i enjoy the millennium falcon thing more than the mario kart ride mm. you know yeah which is kind did of disappointing my biggest disappointment in recent years of theme parks the spider-man ride Oh, pretty disappointing. It sucks, man. Yeah. It's not the great. music's cool, but like, it's literally just you sitting there. Like, yeah. Nothing even in your hands. You're literally just supposed to go like this, and it just feels aimless and like. It was really, really disappointing. Um, Incredicoaster, great time. Hell yeah. Incredicoaster was, smell. A, was a fun little uh, thing. And then watching San Francisco being built was awesome from Big Hero 6. All of the, the Pier 39 themed buildings that are like also Japan themed as well, which is kind of like. A really cool mix and they're also uh building the the their version of like the golden gate bridge with like oh, the cool. sort of japanese adornments on the side you know um looks really really cool all that stuff being built is awesome um it was hot as shit god damn it was like 90 degrees and i did not expect that um but it was a freaking blast it was my first time at universal the world these man the world these were all there we did the it Jurassic we world did ride it. You know, it was really. But they all shot your looks too. They knew you. It was cool seeing Owen Shaw or Deckard Shaw. What's his name? What's uh Owen? Your favorite character? Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. <laughs> Who does he play in your favorite? Oh, movie? he hangs out with Bluey. Oh yeah, Bluey. Bluey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was really neat after the Jurassic World ride to have the the Raptor Wrangler being like, and right here is Blue, and it's a guy in a big in a Raptor sort mm -hmm. of costume, and could that, you see the guy? Uh, no, they actually did a pretty decent yeah. job of like masking it, but it's that part was like really impressive to have post ride. Um, I was, I, it was my first time at Universal. I liked the layout, I loved like the, okay. the massive escalators. At the Is, did you go to Simpsons Land and most I kind of like that? we walked by it and stuff. Yeah, um, that shit was it was kind of cool. The Universal tool, really cool. We walked through all the oh, or we did, we saw all of the fake New York City sets. How like any time, oh, fa it was so goofy and stupid. <laughs> was it perfect though? It was so <laughs> perfectly Fast and Furious and bad. Yeah, it was. It was hilarious. Yeah, Michelle Rodriguez has like a crane that she sticks in the front of a car and like lifts the car up with the guy in it. It was stupid as hell. Um, and I didn't really expect that to be part of the tour. I just thought the tour was like we're just driving and showing you, hey, there's Dom's car and there's Dom. Bumblebee or whatever. Um. But yeah, Universal was actually pretty neat. I wasn't expecting to dig as much as I did uh, compared to Disneyland. How did the kids like it? Loved it. I yeah. mean, it was just the nonstop fun, nonstop wanting to like, what's the next thrill? And we were walking with our homie Rudio, and Rudio gave us like, Rudio has all the knowledge, and he uh, hooked it up with knowing like all the fast lane, all the all that shit, lightning lane stuff. So it was like the most efficient process possible. And whenever something wasn't efficient, I'd have to remind them like, hey. It's uh, you're only impatient right now because all the other rides have not taken two and a half hours yeah. to wait because Rudio has hooked it up. So chill the hell out. Um, I'm sure, but, family loved hearing that. Well, I did, I kept on having to tell like the kids like, all right, chill out, dude. We've gotten into every ride in like 10, 15, 20 minutes. Like <laughs> everything else is gonna take a while. That's just what happened. The first time I ever rode the Cars ride it was like a three hour wait, and that shit sucked. Um, <laughs> Ride's incredible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The cars ride is is always amazing. But I mean, even just walking in that area is awesome. But yeah, I had a freaking blast. Um, and I, uh, the Mickey and Minnie ride is using the brand new tech, and those photos are up there. Where like you see a shot that I took inside the ride, where they are, it starts off in like 
one of those crazy Imagineer, like, how the hell did they do this intro ways where Rudy was like, watch the way this show opens and you're just watching a Mickey and Minnie cartoon and then there's like an explosion and suddenly there's a very cartoony explosion in the screen that you were just looking at. It's like, how, where did that cutout come from? Blew my mind. And then can, the, I, can I pause you for one second for your next thought? In the chat, or Anthony Corbett says, as someone from Ohio, neither of the park roller coasters compare to Cedar Point and Kings Island. Anthony, shut the fuck up. Nobody <laughs> wants to go to Ohio. <laughs> the re- that's why I'm sure everything's, you got to build something amazing in Ohio so everybody there doesn't go, oh, fuck, we're in Ohio. <laughs> they go to 7-Eleven really. like, you, know you know what I mean? Get the know. fuck out of here. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear it. Right, uh, the Mickey Mini ride was super impressive, though. Like, the projection technology they're using to, like, just show shit on the wall where the whole time I'm thinking like, are these LED screens? This shit looks so good and crisp and vibrant. And then the ride shut down. I was like, oh no, yeah, the walls are just blank as hell. They, those are all just projectors. Um, it was, I was really mainly excited to go on that ride to see what sort of new tech these Imagineers are working on. But yeah, Disneyland is so cool. And sure. now I like, I get it, bro. I get all these yeah, Disney welcome. adults that like freak out all the time. Are you going like, to be a Disney adult now? Probably not because it's really expensive, but like... <laughs> I, I get I Did you get, get some ears? Fervor. Did you get ears? No, no. The no, family no. didn't get matching ears? No, the I mean my nieces had had the the ears up, you know. Yeah. They, they had the little ears. Didn't build a lightsaber? Measly three hundred dollars or whatever it is. I should have just for the experience. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. Sure. It's but one I, day you got her, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's definitely an attraction that I need to do just to kind of feel the magic of the music all that swells and everything like that. Oh but, yeah, I guess they have like dope ass music through the whole park and everything, right? Oh Other for sure. Star Wars. Oh for sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean just Having my, my, like, I just wanted to watch my dad's reaction, my nephew's reaction, walking through Batu and seeing, like, mm. here's that first glimpse of, of uh, Kylo's, like, thing, but then there's a Millennium Falcon and just, I like, just love it because, oh like, my everything God. I know about your dad is, like, I can imagine him just being, like, fucking blown like, away. you got to be fucking <laughs> kidding me, man. That's like, this awesome. is unbelievable that this stuff exists in... You were just immersed in this freaking world. It, it it was a blast as well as always. I've always I've been to like the Star Wars land like three times now. It's always like cool as hell. But yeah, getting to ride Rise of the Resistance was the highlight of of the week for sure. Love this one from Gary the Third. Disney adult aspirations. Cedar Point budget. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. Speaking Got of it. Star Wars, do you want to hear my uh, Tie Fighter impression? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Much better than mine. <laughs> That's still more authentic mine, I just compared to this. <laughs> both, both, yeah. Yeah. I do a decent Sebulba. I do a decent Sebulba. Nice. That was good. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> when they're pod racing. Can you, the, <laughs> can you do the Wilhelm scream? What? It, um, the yeah. Isn't that, is that one? That was more like Link from Zelda. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I can't do it. I always forget that because for the longest time I thought the Wilhelm scream was another scream that I would always say. Oh, the All Real Monsters scream. Yeah, I thought that was the Wilhelm scream. Mm. Yeah, one of them goes up, one goes down, right? <laughs> you know what I'm about? The longer, yeah. the longer one there it is. is the quick one. That's mm. the Wilhelm. Scream. That's yeah. Wilhelm. That's not the one. The I'm one I always of. thought the Wilhelm scream was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the one that goes longer. Yeah, <laughs> not the Wilhelm. There you go. We're gonna now. We're now we're gonna get sued by Lucasfilm mm-hmm. for using that one. And from your spot on, so, do, 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 dude, it really is good. Like you do that, and then right when the, and then when when the remember when he like pulls up right next to Anakin, they're stuck, and it's like, that's so sick. Anthony that, says, uh, Anthony Corbett says, Cedar Points is definitely way cheaper, lol. But yeah, we can have a kind of funny meetup one day at Cedar Point, lol. No, Anthony, no one is meeting up at Cedar Point. I'm not going there, Anthony. Stop I'm not going there, Anthony. God damn. Rather go to Kansas. No, well, that's not true. All right. <laughs> Cedar Point at least has something going on. I did walk Kansas, through. they gather on the rock at night. They watch that. They go, oh, look at the rock. Has it moved yet? It hasn't moved yet. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like my day with Kenya, man. Just rolling the yeah. tired out. <laughs> <laughs> you had something I else swear, honestly, there. though, the, the questions that people do ask me are not far from that. When I About sure, driving from Kenya. Kenya. Yeah. Except they're usually too, like, they don't want to say anything offensive, so they're sure, like, "Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah." But you're not like, Ooh. you know, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. They're toeing the line. They're just like, "Ooh." I mean, to be fair, it's like 
Kenya is one of the more like developed westernized African countries, especially now. So like now we have like American fast food and all that kind of stuff. Sorry. But it was Yeah. <laughs> I know, That's right? Yeah. Only it's export. Not, you still you're repping Kenya. Do you go back? Do you still have family there? I don't know if I can rep Kenya that much as a white guy, you know, but uh, Yeah, I mean you, know. you live there, you raise my, so my, my parents were both born and raised there and they like speak fluent Swahili and like That's they kind awesome. of grew up in a That's different awesome. time. Yeah. I used to joke that you could technically call me African American, but now I just joke yeah. about how I used to joke about that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. that's probably a better call. <laughs> yeah, but are they still uh, there? Do you still have family? Uh, no, actually, they eventually moved over here, but we 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 go back a lot. Pretty often. Now they live in Ohio, North Carolina, actually. Oh, okay, gotcha. A little yeah. more interesting. Dog, you could... <laughs> Lamar. <laughs> more interesting in Ohio. <laughs> we already <laughs> have Kansas, Greg, and I feel like it it could be yeah, a bit it's when it's Kansas one very Ohio, specific thing. The... It's just that funny thing of like. Everyone oh, knows go. Kansas sucks and shits on it. Here we go. Next to everybody else just forgets about Ohio. It's kind of become you know the I mean? new thing to shit on, though, Ohio. It's like the meme is like people <laughs> will post TikToks of like the view from my <laughs> Ohio apartment, and it's just like the most dreary, like oh, bleak sure, thing sure, with sure. like amazing music. Mm. Well, it's because Drew Carey Elden tricked Ring. a lot of people to move there back in the day, you know? All right. Yeah. Cleveland Rocks, remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people thought they were going to go there, have a beer that had caffeine and beer in it, but they didn't, did they? It's just a waste. What? Remember this? This is a downer. plot point of the Drew Carey show. They had a, be a caffeinated beer. What episode was that? Can we look that up? Like, it's the, the entire the fucking run of the show. You know what I mean? Yet? Buzz beer, Should I think be. they called it. That sounds no, like a golden right. ticket idea. Maybe it isn't. Anyways, Ohio sucks. Not as much as Kansas. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Kind of Funny Podcast each and every week. We come to you with a brand new show about whatever it is we want to talk about. If you want to talk with us, of course, you can write in to be part of the show and usually get ignored on kindoffunny.com slash KF podcast. We had some good ones, but we never needed them. You know what I mean? Sorry, Josh, the mailman chatmon. Ooh, the pussy no pasa. Uh, you can go to patreon.com so slash kind of funny to get each and every episode of the kind of funny podcast ad free. You can also go there to get a whole bunch of exclusive bonus content. You can watch us record the shows live as we record them. Of course, you get that for the other podcasts as well. And of course, you can just get some exclusive merch or have a good time. If you have no bucks, toss our way. It's no big deal. Each and every week, there's a brand spanking new episode with ads up on youtube.com slash kind of funny in podcast services around the globe. No matter where you get the show, thank you so much for supporting it. Carter, thank you for all the music you've brought to our lives. Where should people keep up with you? Uh, let's see. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Carter Harrell. That's H-A-R-R-E-L-L. -L. Um, is there any, you know, cute single ladies out there? My phone number is 919. No, I'm kidding. Uh, no, yeah, that's about it. What about, so like you up. put up the cool thing with the GameCube and the is that what your Instagram usually is? Yeah, although, you know, to be honest, I'm not the best poster. I'm kind of like a once a month kind of mm. guy. That's fine. Which, yeah, I mean, you just saw Cody Hagler. Do Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. You can't I'm be worse than that. Cody's saying that like I mean? lost an elevator. We go look for the elevator. It's fucking nothing. Got a phone booth. <laughs> like, what, what, Cody what? Hagler out there with Kansas internet and an Ohio education trying to post to Instagram. He's like, check out this elevator. It's just The Rock. It's just a little rock. <laughs> There's a great uh, old joke. I think around. it's Mitch Hedberg who says that like when uh, escalator breaks, it should say s there. temporarily stairs. Yeah. Right? Sorry for the convenience. Sorry, sorry for the convenience. <laughs> That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, right, Cody. it's been our pleasure to serve you. He got what he wanted. I followed him.